Hey guys, back here again with a new review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Ares record, Welcome Home. After about a year since Carousel, the lead single for the project came out, From the Depths of YouTube has released this emo rap project. Having already garnered a large following from reimagining other popular, mostly rap songs into like what if things like, for example, like Spongebob if it was trap and stuff like that, he has gotten a kind of fan base that kind of follows him avidly, almost like a cult following in a way. The lead batter on the album is his latest single, Bad News, immediately immersing you into the wonder world of Ares. Thumping drums with trap influences matched with Ares' very calm, soothing voice in the song already puts it off to a good start, but then add on the instruments and samples here and there, and it really brings it up to another level. In this song in particular, a guitar riff that belongs somewhere in Spongebob as well as Cheers that should as well kind of make this thing magical. Sayonara then follows Bad News with a, something a bit more to it. While I do love Bad News for the unique production and, and, and the, some of the basic Wonder World Ares features, Sayonara gives it a new touch, a new flavor that you'll hear a lot more throughout the album, and that is the much more catchy side of him. With every line and every verse and hook being an earworm that I just catch myself humming throughout the day, and this song as well as many others, they all just come across as just geniusly catchy. And occasionally on the record he puts a bit more oomph into his vocals and it really brings out another side too. Like while I do enjoy his kind of calm sound that I, is on bad news, I actually prefer when he really brings out a lot more energy into his voice and a lot more power as it's a lot more unique that way with it being calm and soft he does still have his unique sound but his voice at a higher just stronger sound it sounds even better and then comes deity which inhabits the same world as sayonara another song where the vocals do get a little harder and grittier at points and then kind of fade back into that soft airy style while nice guitar flows in and out before finally getting back to those gritty vocals on a catchy chorus Amy's Grave on here is a rare occurrence too where instead of the production and vocal performance that I'm really focusing on, it's more the lyrics. And don't get me wrong, the, the other aspects like the production and vocals like I mentioned are just pretty damn good on here's this track as well, but the lyrics just stand out with it being much more touching and it, uh, just the highlight of the song. And it really makes you kind of reflect on the previous track's lyrics as well as being aware of the lyrics on the following tracks. And in particular, it really makes you take a look to see how kind of emo this record is, with it really be kind of being sad, although a lot of the instrumentals are kind of more upbeat and happy and have nice little California vibes and tunes and samples added in. The lyrics are kind of depressing, primarily reminiscing on lost relationships and absence of self-worth, which are kind of cliché vibes and topics that kind of go around in emo rap. It isn't conveyed that way. Race Car, Pony, and Santa Monica are more of the same, but positively, they all just have good production, good vocals, catchy, just flat out good songs in general. And then we get to the closer of the project, Home. With a bit of a different take, it's much slower instead of a guitar kind of riffing throughout it, and it has a piano. And while Amy's Grave was a good lyrical thing to watch and listen to instead of just the instrumental and how he sounds, Home, I feel, does the best at this, with the lyrics being top-notch and the vocal performance also being fantastic and you can really feel his heartfelt singing and power on it. As the whole album is pretty introspective, this album kind of touches on a new level, really referencing exact circumstances like rather than confronting his oppression and trying to fix it, he just keeps it to himself rather than burdening his mother and putting that weight on her shoulders too. And that's where I feel like these kind of cliche themes, instead of being cliche are kind of original is that where it's it's literal personal experiences instead of just broad themes that people just are sad and kind of want to die and you may have noticed i did skip over one track in the list here and that song well it's kind of special so i guess looking at this thing in the broad scheme of it it kind of is one of those albums where the lead single kind of sets the standard and then everything else just doesn't reach that level it doesn't hit hit that same excitement that great feeling that you hear when you hear top tier song but that's okay and that's okay because this is like one of the most fun rap pop 
rock songs I've ever heard in my entire life. It's so fun and catchy. The production is so well done, and the vocal performance is off the charts on this thing. Carousel was my favorite song of 2018. The swapping of certain instruments going into the chorus and then back into the verse is just so genius without using its, losing its flow, but yet still keeping or not keeping those same instruments. It just completely changes from this roaring bass with guitar over to a light kind of piano at points, and it's just beautiful and genius. The vocal performance, as I mentioned, unmatched across the entire project, which I already think is pretty incredible for, at certain points too but here it's just it's the best of both worlds the loud roaring vocals that he has on here like on the chorus is just so fantastic and then there's softer moments like i mentioned when the piano comes in kind of at one point where it's it's so smooth and elegant it, it it's almost like not even the same song but yet the way it just comes in and out is just fantastic like i said this was my favorite track from 2018 and i could not get over this thing i listened to it far more than any other track last year, and anybody I discussed this rap with at all, pretty much not on a surface level, any deeper than a surface level, I will bring this song up as a, a fantastic way, or example of genre blending. And only ranging it at 24 minutes, it's rather short, but doesn't feel rushed at all, and it definitely doesn't overextend its stay. Fun bouncy production with this opposite lyrical and introspection is a very odd but great match here with the california vibes aries gives off along with the kind of emo sad boy styling that is so common nowadays uh, there isn't really much to not like about this thing other than like the occasional awkward lyric placed in somewhere so in the end i'm gonna give this album a nine so let me know what you guys thought of the review here uh what i should review next um you know make sure to follow me on twitter soundcloud all that and um yeah have a good day see you guys next time bye